Hello everybody and good evening to you all folks and welcome back aboard to Real Time Football. My name is Tom and I'm going to bring you my Premier League uh, Game Week 6 predictions um, Yeah, for Premier League Game Week 6. If you do our watch this uh, video, whether it's on the uh, Premier Replay or live right now, make sure you uh, do leave a like on it, on the video and uh, hit that subscribe button if you are new. Thank you very much to everybody who has watched. Do let us know your thoughts and uh, predictions down below in the comments as well. Say hello. Let's like hear your opinions. So yeah, Premier League game week six. Big weekend in the Premier League with that North London derby taking place on uh, Sunday. Massive game that is really. So let's get straight to it then, folks. Crystal Palace, we Fulham up first. Um, tough one to call. Tough one to call. I'm going to give it the way of Pat. Uh, um, well, am I? No. I'm going to go a draw. Uh, I think both teams will come out well. I reckon Fulham will be the better side for large quantities of the game, but I do not think that Palace will lose this game. I think it'll be an entertaining two all draw at Sellers Park between Palace and Fulham in a London derby, of course. See, my prediction for that one is Crystal Palace 2, Fulham 2. Moving on to Luton Town, the Mighty Hatters, who take on Wolves at uh, the Kenny. Luton obviously completing that uh, historic promotion all the way from non-league to the Premier League in just nine years. A phenomenal story and a club that is waiting for their first points on the board to really get their Premier League season up started and i'm going to back luton this weekend for the points now trust me it's not easy to, it's not easy to call this one but i think luton can beat wolves real talk i do i reckon pelly rodrick and panzu will step up to the plate and get a massive goal for Luton. I reckon around early second half and they'll hold on tight for that for that win. And I think they will just get it against Wolves. And once they've got that first win on the board, I expect that they will uh, only progress further in the season. So, yeah. My prediction for that one is Luton 1, uh, Wolves 0. I've gone. I just think Luton will edge it. They're ready for that first win. And I see Wolves as the perfect opponent to uh, get that big win against. Manchester City taking on an informed Nottingham Forest over the past few weeks. Nottingham Forest have impressed quite a fair bit particularly after that wonderful win at Chelsea uh, back before the international break. Uh, obviously, it wasn't such a good uh, result against Burnley. However, I think they'll have a, have a go at the Etihad, to say the least. It's Manchester City, so they're not going to go there, you know, and uh, do anything special, I wouldn't have thought. But I think they'll have a good go. I do think they'll get the opening goal. However, I think it'd be a case of Man City turning it around. But I do think that I will get on the score sheet and get an opening goal for Forest. However, City is City, and I feel as though City will come back to win it 3-1. I just feel as though Forest, yes, they're in good they're good looking at the moment. They're looking good. You know, that big result against Chelsea. I just feel as though City are too strong for them, particularly at the Etihad. Maybe at the City ground is a different story, but when you're looking at at the Etihad, yeah, for me, it's a City win written all over it. Some people will say it's harsh against Forest, but for me, 3 1 sounds reasonable. I think they will get a goal, but I just think City will turn it around and win comfortably. So, Manchester City 3, Nottingham Forest 1 is the prediction for that game. And then at the 5.30 slot on Saturday, um, uh, Brentford are taking on Everton. 
which is uh, an interesting game, most certainly, has proved to be in the past seasons. And Everton, just looking at their stats, if you just look at their stats for two, for two minutes, they are one point out of five games going into a sixth. Minus seven goal difference. They've played five, a game more, obviously, than Burnley and Luton. Burnley on a game less than what are on one point. Everson have been so poor at the start this season. So poor. And that draw to Sheffield United, they could have lost it. Let's go to Everton's results. It really is horrific. This season, they've scored two goals. Two goals. They've had 76 seven shots, 25 of those 67 shots on target, and they've only created 10 big chances this season. That is woeful from Everson. They have so far accumulated yellow, 10 yellow cards. They've conceded nine goals. Pickford has made 15 crucial saves. And there's been two errors leading to goals and one own goal this season. All of those stats add up to a team who are heading the way of relegation. Two goals in five games is not really acceptable. It's embarrassing, really, from Everton's standpoint. And the amount of goals they conceded in, well, in five games. For me, that number is only going to get higher. Because if you look at Brentford's stats, Brentford are just a phenomenal team, aren't they? They're in 10th, 11th, six points on the board, two wins. They're not doing bad, Brentford, at all. But I think, I think it's one win, actually. One win, a few draws. But they've been brilliant at the start of this season, Brentford. And they are a brilliant team under Thomas Frank. And when out of teams like Everton or Man United, any weak teams come to the GTEC Community Stadium, you just feel like Brentford or Piper. And for me, that's exactly what's going to happen to Everton. I don't think they're in form. I don't think they'll do anything exciting. I just think they'll get a sat wipe. Well, they'll be used as a wet wipe for the floor, Everton. For me... In Burma, this uh, they'll be too good for that Everton defence. It could be more than 4 0, but Brentford 4 Everton is my prediction for that one. For me, Everton just aren't strong enough to get any kind of results. Burnley then are taking on Manchester United at Turf Moor. It is a fixture which may suit Burnley in terms of the timing and Manchester United's pretty woeful form this season. They have conceded. They, they are on a minus four goal difference. They, I believe, have only won one game. And would you believe me? When I tell you that they've conceded. They've actually conceded one goal more than Everton. They've only kept one clean sheet, and that was against Wolves. It was a surprise. If you look at the results, one nil against Wolves. Spurs just wiped them, didn't they? Really phenomenal points by Spurs. Easy win for them in the end. 3-2 against Forest. They got lucky against Forest. They found themselves 2-0 down in about four minutes. Which credits Forest. Embarrassing though. Lost to us. But 3 0 found themselves 3-0 down. Early stage of second half against Brighton at Old Trafford. And it's not acceptable form. From Manchester United, and I feel as though, as well, that away record is absolutely woeful. I mean, against the big seven, they've won none of their away games. None. I 
Now, Burnley they got the first point against board, on the board against Forest. I just feel as though they're looking for that a little bit more. And against the like, such an out of form team, such as United, coming off the back of two defeats in a row, Burnley might be able to suck on that blood, you know, that's been drawn and really hurt United. So for me, I'm going to go for a first win of the season again here. I'm going to go Burnley to get their first win of the season. I'm going to go Burnley 1, Man United in. I just feel as though Manchester United at the moment are not in form, not doing well. The away form is woeful. And if Burnley come out with quality and play a good game, play the game that they play, they should have no problems being Man United. So, some people may be thinking, I'm thinking this is controversial. Don't blame you. But I genuinely feel as though Burnley could sneak it. Moving on then, that's that North London derby. Oh, it's all firing up at the Emirates. Yes, two o'clock kickoff, Arsenal free Spurs. It's a 2pm kickoff on Sunday. Oh boy, oh boy, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully we pipe them. Um, short but sweet. Got a good record against uh, Tottenham at home. And this season, I don't see anything more than a win. Now, I know Spurs haven't lost the game. They're in good form. la di da di da Woohoo. That's fantastic. But do I feel that Spurs' style of play suits us? Yes. This Ange Postacoglu way of attacking is leaving a lot of space open on that for teams on the counter. Now, they've not really come across a team who can hit them on the counter spurs, but we can. And we can exploit that space. And in my opinion, we can use that weakness of spurs on the attack to really hurt them. Now, I haven't gone too extravagant, but... I've gone with the scoreline that it's been the last two games at home. 3-1 to the Arsenal. I reckon maybe Sonny or whoever will get his customary goal. But it, but it'll be a Saka, Trossard, you know, Saka, Leo, Jesus. Maybe even Odegaard again the score sheet again. But for me, it's going to be another really good all-rounder. I think B will get himself on the score sheet. I think Leo will score as well in the North London derby if he starts. So for me, 3-1 to the Arsenal is my prediction in the North London derby. We better win it. If we lose to Spurs, I have to say I'd be embarrassed. I have to say I'd be embarrassed. Moving on then to Brighton, who take on Bournemouth in the Premier League. Now, Brighton have had an excellent start to the season. You know, if we've got four, I think four out of five wins or something like that, four out of five wins, absolutely piped Luton. In fact, their only defeat, to put it in just small, their only defeat was to West Ham at home. That's it. That's all they've lost. Beat United, beat Luton, they've beaten everyone except for West Ham. So, yeah, I guess Bournemouth is in Bournemouth for a good team, but but I feel as though Bar Brighton have too much. Brighton are a very good team, a very good team. I think Bournemouth will get a goal, but I think Brighton should easily beat them. So, sweet and short. I've gone 4-1 to the uh, Seagulls, who at the moment are currently 1-0 back against that AAK Athens as I record this video. So, yeah. Uh, 
Um, moving on then to Chelsea v Villa, who, again, as I record this video, are currently in action. Uh, sorry, have actually played today. Thursday is the recording date, by the way. You will see it on the Friday. They have lost 3-2. But I think Chelsea, well, Chelsea have been woeful at the start of this season, really. Let's not sugarcoat things. They've been woeful. Lost to Forest at home. 0-0 against Bournemouth. 1-1 draw against um, Luton. Yeah, not good stuff from Chelsea, really, at all. Not very impressive. Yes, they beat Luton 3-0. Let's all cheer for Chelsea. They got to win. One one against Liverpool. Who did he play in the second game? Who's, who did he play in the second game? Chelsea, 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 Chelsea. Where are you, Chelsea? Yeah, here we go. Lost 3 1 to West Ham. Now, that's a bit embarrassing, really. Chelsea should be getting at least a point against West Ham, in my opinion. But West Ham outclassed them in the end of that game. You know, I mean, the fact that Aguero opened the score so early made the game special. 20, Chuck and Wekamar got their goal. But Antonio and um, Pakitar just sealed the deal. They were outclassed by West Ham. And then that defeat to Forest really says a lot about Chelsea's season and it says a lot about where Chelsea are at right now and how low down they actually are. I mean, no offense, look, no offense to Forest, but it's an embarrassing defeat that you should not be losing. Chelsea Football Club, a big six team, should not be losing at home to Nottingham Forest. But credit to Forest all the way around. Anthony Langer, I think he was on his debut. Full debut, um, got his got, got the winning goal, and they could not find a response. It was an early second half goal. Chelsea kept missing, missing, missing. They could not find the goal, and I can only imagine that Chelsea fans must be really frustrated watching their team who only scored two goals this season. Uh, sorry, five goals this season. So Chelsea and Villa two. Because I don't think Villa are that good. But against Chelsea, who can't score goals and aren't that good defensively, who says that Villa can't do, beat them? Right, talking of West Ham, they're up against Liverpool at Anfield and short and sweet this one. I'm going to go 2-0 Liverpool for me. Uh, Anfield, I don't think West Ham could win there. Be a long shot to say they could win there for me. Short and sweet, Liverpool 2 0. Comfortable win for Liverpool in the end. I feel as though West Ham will have a good season, but Liverpool and Man City and Arsenal and all the rest, except for Chelsea, it, Tottenham will probably even beat them, will just be a bit too hard for them. I've gone 2 0 Liverpool for this one. And finally, Sheffield United take on Newcastle United. And I have gone 2 1 to Newcastle. Now, Sheffield United got their first point on the board after that 2 all draw to Everton. Newcastle are coming, coming uh, going back into form. Uh, however, I don't think it'll be comfortable for Newcastle. I think they'll sneak the win. I reckon Sheffield United will get a goal. I reckon they'll win it 2 1. Still looking a bit. You know what I mean? I didn't really see any of the AC Milan game for Newcastle. Uh, they looked all right against Brentford. Only one of a penalty, though. A bit concerning. No, listen. I think 2 was reasonable for Newcastle. I think Sheffield United will get a goal. I think Sheffield United will be competitive. But Newcastle should, and I think will, get the three points. And with that, that rounds off the Premier League Game Week 6 predictions. Thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely rest of your uh, Friday evening, uh, Friday tea time. And um, 
well, you'll see this on Friday. And if I am streaming tomorrow or today, yeah, this is the problem when I'm recording things. I have to say tomorrow or today. But anyway, because you're seeing this tomorrow in my time, if you are, yeah, I will be, uh, might be live to, uh, later today. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely rest of the evening. And I will, um, well, have a lovely rest of your tea time. And I will see you all in the stream if I'm live. If not, tomorrow for Saturday Night Football. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.